Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar, Easily Use PDF Files in CAD CAM Programs. This webinar will demonstrate how easy it is to use PDF in popular CAD programs. It will teach you how to differentiate between vector PDF files and raster PDF files. And knowing this, you'll be able to identify the PDF files that will convert accurately as editable DXF, DWG, or APGL files and those that will be of limited use as a tracing layer or underlay. So I um, hope this will help you. Uh, today's webinar presenter, um, Jean Haney, has worked with PDF files since the formats first released by Adobe for more than 25 years. And as a co-founder of Visual Integrity, she has helped countless organizations find ways to reuse the purpose and access the object information in PDF and PostScript-based drawings. Let me tell you now a little bit about Novage. Novage is one of the largest online stores for design software. We offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's needs. So come visit us at novage.com and check out uh, PDF2CAD on our product page. And for more daily software news and promotions, um, you can always find us on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Coming up on our next Novage webinar, what's new in Creo 5.0? And last but not least, today's webinar is free and has been recorded. So if you want to rewatch this or any other webinar in our collection, uh, just head on over to Novage's YouTube or Vimeo channel. And now let me share um, Jean's screen so she can talk to you directly about PDF2CAD. The transit. Okay. Take it away, thanks very, Okay, thanks very much, Barbara. Um, so uh, my name is Jean Haney, and as Barbara said, I am one of the co-founders of Visual Integrity. And today we're going to talk about vector and raster PDF files, uh, how you tell the difference between them and what you can do with them. Um, one of the most uh, frequent questions we get is when somebody sends us, for example, a scan drawing and they want to be able to use it in a CAD program. And um, that's not possible with our software. And the reasons why um, that's difficult to work with will be um, explained in this, um, in this webinar. Uh, so the objectives of the webinar are to define the two types of PDF files and identify their typical sources. I'm going to give you a few different methods to easily classify them and outline the optimal approach for converting both raster and vector PDF files. And then we'll look at some practical examples uh, towards the end. Uh, Visual Integrity was founded in 1993. Uh, for more than 25 years, we've been pioneering conversion techniques. We're specialized in vector formats, and we create tools for end users, integrators, as well as SDKs for developers. Uh, our webinar series is designed to educate, reorient, and offer ideas to improve workflows. So the two types of PDF files. The first is what we call a raster PDF. It's a PDF file which contains bitmapped images. You have to think of it uh, as a flat image or photocopy. And PDF is like the envelope. You place it in to send it to someone. So PDF in this case is a kind of wrapper around a scanned file or a JPEG. Vector PDFs are composed of geometry uh, that defines all of the objects and lines and text and attributes in the file. They're resolu resolution independent and they're searchable. Um, the main difference uh, the, in creation is that vector PDF files are computer generated and they're created through uh, scripting, through saying save as, through export in applications, whereas raster PDFs are um, scanned or otherwise uh, saved as image files. An example of, a, of raster versus vector. First, this is a raster image. From this um, point of view, it looks uh, pretty good, uh, but it's comprised of pixels. It's a fixed resolution and it's not scalable. And you'll see once we zoom it, what happens to it? It gets all jagged looking. And that's one of the characteristic ways to tell if a PDF file is a uh, raster or a vector. 
A vector is composed of objects, lines, curves, paths, text. Um, it's scalable and it's resolution independent, which means that when you zoom it, um, it will become, uh, it will enlarge perfectly. You won't see that jaggedness. Um, it's made up of a lot of different objects. Oops. Um, and you can see that through the grouping. This is showing all, you, all of the uh, individual objects in the, in, that make up the light bulb. And when they're both zoomed, you can see the difference between a raster and a vector. The vector can scale to any size, large or small. It's device independent. And it's, um, it looks great no matter what size it is. Whereas the raster, once it's enlarged, it loses much of its definition and becomes grainy or noisy looking. How you convert these different files. So a raster file, um, to convert a raster to a raster is easy. If you want to convert a, a JPEG PDF into, a, um, into just a JPEG, you, you can do that within uh, Acrobat. You can do it through taking a screenshot. Um, there's plenty of ways to do that. And um, it's, it's, it's simple, but it's just really for archival or for putting graphics perhaps on websites. Uh, raster to vector is very tricky. Uh, because the only way to really do that well is to auto trace the file. And that's difficult because once a PDF is created, it's a page with objects on it. And a software that is going to do auto tracing really doesn't know what that object is. It doesn't know if it's a light bulb, a CAD drawing, a logo. So it has no intelligence in it to figure out how to connect lines and patterns. So um, auto tracing is um, the only real approach. It works with simple drawings and you can find auto tracing solutions in products like Adobe Illustrator, in some CAD programs and as independent applications. But every time you uh, use raster to vector, you tend to need to do manual cleanup for probably 20%. And sometimes it really is just easier to redraw it using the raster file as an underlay. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, vector to raster is easy also. It's the same concept as raster to raster. You're basically taking a photocopy, photocopy or image of the file and saving it um, as a raster. Vector to vector is the ideal methodology to convert files. If you're lucky enough to have vector files to start with, computer generated files, then you can use software like ours to automatically extract all of the geometry, all of the text, all of the data in the file and present it in the file format that you need to edit with um, perfect accuracy. So in order to classify PDF files, you say, hey, okay, I get all that. Now, what kind of PDF files do I have? There are really three types we look at. There's the vector PDF, the raster PDF and the hybrid PDF. Uh, to, to determine the file type, you can open the PDF file in a PDF reader like Acrobat or Foxit Reader, and you can classify the PDF. If you use the wrong conversion tool, you can end up with no results, poor results, or inaccurate results. So the methods to identify the PDF file, um, uh, I'll go through these uh, in on the next few slides. But basically, once you open the PDF file, you can click anywhere on the page. Um, you can magnify a section, or you can try to select text. <clears throat> Each one of those will um, give you an, an idea of whether you have a vector, a raster, or a hybrid PDF file. So the first approach, click anywhere on the page. If you click on the page and nothing happens, you click in multiple places. If nothing happens, then you have a computer generated vector PDF file, which is the ideal. If you click on the page and the entire page turns blue, what that's doing is selecting a raster image. So it's telling you that you have a scan drawing. And with a hybrid PDF file, if you click on the drawing in a few different places, and in some places it stays white, and in other places it turns blue, then you have some objects that are rasters, the blue ones, and you have some that are vectors, where the uh, page remains white. 
Uh, the second way to tell is to magnify to greater than a thousand percent. The reason you need to magnify so much is because um, scanned files or raster files are saved at different resolutions. Um, the term dots per inch DPI is used to measure this. And um, the DPI of say 96 or 72, which is web-based um, resolution, is very low resolution. So if you magnified to even 400%, you would see it get grainy. But if you have a scan that was done at 300 DPI, you would have to magnify it a lot in order to see the breakdown occur. So let's look at uh, the idea of magnifying to greater than 1,000%. In a vector PDF, you'll see that everything enlarges perfectly. It all looks good. With a raster PDF, when you magnify that much, you see everything break down. You see the uh, jaggedness, you see the uh, lack of resolution, um, the lack of quality in the file. And with a hybrid PDF, if you're looking at the example on the screen there, the red circle is a vector and it looks very sharp and clear. And the rest of, and that's something that was done as a call out or as a highlight on a scan drawing. And you can see by the text, especially uh, below that says nurses station, that that's a raster file. So this is a mixed file. Okay. The third way to tell is to try and select text. Um, in a vector PDF file, you can select text and you can copy and paste it to a clipboard and see, um, um, that that's a vector PDF file. It has the information about all the characters, um, lines, and um, words uh, saved in it. With a raster PDF, the text cannot be selected. And in this example, if you remember from the first uh, way to tell the difference, when we click on the text, it turns blue, which is showing you that it's a scan drawing. And in the hybrid PDF, um, this text is actually plotted, and that's something that we will um, look at uh, in more detail in a couple of minutes. But you can see that the gray text on the left is a vector, and the black text on the right is um, a raster. Honestly, I don't know how this file was created. It was a sample file from a customer, and I don't know exactly why it is the way that it is, but it's an excellent example of showing a hybrid PDF file. Okay, so let's look at some of these files. Um, the first thing that we'll look at is um, a vector file. And uh, let me just open one up here for you. Bring it over to the screen. Okay, so this file is a vector file. Um, some ways we can tell. I'm gonna just open my notepad and show you um, uh, let me just change the size of that. One second. It's got stuck on my screen here. Um, okay, so if I select some text here and I copy it and then I paste it into my notepad, you can see that it understands exactly what the file is saying. So we know that it has selectable text. We know that when we click anywhere on it, nothing turns blue except for perhaps the logo. Nope, even that's a vector, um, I think. And um, we can see that when we magnify, especially it's good to magnify areas with circles and curves because then you can see that they don't break down at all. Uh, like you, we were looking at in the other examples. Um, okay, so that's one example of a vector. And now let's look at a second one. Okay, in this one again, we have selectable text. And you can see that if we magnify that the C is perfect in terms of its curves. So that's also a vector file. If we look at uh, another example, this one is going to show you plotted text. And we'll talk a little bit about text. Um, let's see, let's just turn this. So with this example, we can't uh, select any text. 
but that doesn't mean that it's a raster file. It means that the text was probably saved in the CAD program as um, a CAD font, which is a uh, um, output to a plotter uh, format so that when it's converted in a program like ours as a vector, it becomes not the word, but it becomes an object that looks like the word or an object that looks like the letter. So we can't select this here. Let's just zoom in on it so you can see uh, what happens. You see that everything is uh, enlarging. Um, if we go in very close though, now you can see, if you look at the G and the P, you can see that this is a plotted font. So you can see that it's all pen strokes. They're all straight strokes and they get to be very small as they go around to make a curve. And when you look at that um, at a much uh, lower resolution, it looks, uh, like it could be text, but you can tell it's kind of characteristic of a um, of a font uh, that is a plotting font. So these you won't be able to edit, but you will be able to um, delete the text if you want because it's really graphical objects and you'll be able to put new text in if you want to. Okay, in terms of, uh, let's see, we've got one more vector example. Um, this is a good example as well. Again, this is one that has plotted text. We can see that by zooming in on something. Let's go into an area with some curves. And again, it's uh, plotted at a high, at, um, because it's vectors, it continues to get larger and it keeps its scale and it keeps its quality. But you can start to see we're now at 1600%. Uh, now we're at 3,000 percent and you can see the lines from the plotting. Okay, now let's look at a couple of um, raster files. This one looks pretty good, but if I click on it, you'll see that it's a raster file. The whole screen turns blue. And if we um, zoom in on an S, you can see how um, we, how much it breaks down. and and that's only 568%. So um, this is a pretty low resolution raster file. Okay, let's go to the next raster file. This one, when we click on it, you can see that it's made up of uh, some strips, sometimes plotters, um, sometimes uh, when applications create raster files uh, or scanners create raster files, they sometimes create um, small strips and then sew them together. So in this example, if you were to convert this with uh, software, you would end up with probably about 10 separate um, JPEG or TIFF images, which um, then the, the uh, viewer would stitch together. Um, but if we uh, zoom in here, again, you can see even the, um, even the straight lines, it's pretty obvious that, they're, um, that that's a raster. We have another example of a raster file here. Uh, this one is, uh, has got, um, highlighting on it. This was a, a piece of paper that was scanned. So you can tell that that is. And when we, uh, and I already can see that this is a very low resolution scan. So when we zoom in on it, it to totally breaks down. This one you could tell with your naked eye that it's a raster, but there are plenty of examples where you actually have to um, go in and look at the files uh, with magnification or with clicking on different elements to determine what you have. In terms of a hybrid vector, um, this is a great example um, of a vector file that has just a few images in it. This is the one that I showed in the um, earlier uh, slide where I said I wasn't sure quite why it was made the way it was because the entire shoe, uh, the sole of the shoe is a vector uh, except for this part here. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I did the wrong thing. Whoops, hang on. Okay, so um, except for this part here, you can see that this is all vector. Uh, this is vector, this half, and all, everything around it is vector. This is an image, the Vibram logo, 
So uh, if we click on that, you'll see that highlights is blue. If we highlight on uh, this, it highlights is blue. So I'm supposing that this was added and um, you know maybe just done as an overlay in the file because this is the only little bit that 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 is an image. These two things, and for the rest, it's a vector file. So if you were to convert this with our software you would get a perfect CAD file, uh, which you could open in AutoCAD or whatever program you use. And it would also generate two images. And those images would open up in uh, the CAD program as referenced images. And you would get the whole uh, CAD drawing. Um, but these uh, two parts would be uh, images. OK, another hybrid vector is uh, this example where the whole drawing you can you can select the text so you know your text is vector text you can see that when you highlight it uh, we'll do that in a second that it is um, uh, all resolution independent and vector but these uh, pictures of the house are um, our images so again, it, when this file is converted, you would get this as a vector file in your CAD program, and you would have these images um, that are referenced and brought in uh, uh, through reference. So here we just can zoom in on that room, and you can see, again, with curves and all, uh, how it um, how you can see that it's a vector. Uh, it's plotted. So uh, again, you can see that the curves are a little bit uh, uh, wonky right here. But uh, for the most part, you can tell um, that it's uh, uh, you can tell that it's a vector file for sure. OK, now this example is another hybrid um, file that uh, has a raster in it, and that's this table right here. So when we click on the um, drawing itself, you can see that it's a vector, and this table has been added as a raster image. So when you um, convert this, you'll get the drawing here. All of this is part of the drawing. You can select all the text. The um, uh, This is all text. Uh, but this would be an image that is referenced and brought in. So if you wanted to replace that um, with a table that you make um, with text, you can easily do that. OK, and then I have one last example here, uh, which is an example of um, the two different types of text. So here you can see that this is selectable text, and this is not. So if we zoom in on this one, you'll see, oops, hang on. This is plotted text. So it's still a vector, but it's plotted. And we have to zoom a lot more to see that. And we'll try and use the B for that, because you can see best with um, the curved letters that this is uh, plotted. And let's just go up to uh, one of the other letters that was here. So the three, this you can see is um, uh, true type font three. So that's uh, character text. Um, let's just, that was this three here, and I showed you this B here. OK, so those are the examples. Now uh, what we'll do is, um, I'll show you the uh, software itself. Uh, this is PDF to CAD. And what this will do is it will uh, convert any vector based, that is computer generated PDF file, into um, a DWG, a DXF, or HPGL file. Um, we also have software called PDF to Picture, which will convert the PDF into WMF or SVG, which can be opened in Visio or other um, applications um, uh, like that. OK, so uh, I think what we will do is uh, first convert this one, This uh, not the Astros. No, that's not what we want to do. Um, I'm trying to remember which one was hybrid 
vector, this one. Okay, now we have an options, uh, we have a lot of options in the software. So when you're, uh, when you're, when you're converting a file, you first want to pick the format. So you've got DXF, DWG, and HPGL. Um, you have uh, options for converting uh, individual characters into strings. Um, you can convert characters to curves. Um, I won't read through all of these, but you have um, uh, ability to ignore the images in the file, so you just get the vector. Um, you can also ignore the vector and just get the images. Uh, so you have all those options. When you have character-based or searchable text, you're able to map the font so that you get a perfect representation. Uh, if you don't have that font on your system, it will substitute something very close. So we have a lot of possibilities in the font area. As far as page goes, um, you can convert um, all of the pages or you convert can, can convert a range of pages. And you can take a multi-page PDF and convert it to a single, uh, you have several options here, of single, merge, horizontal, vertical, or layers. So you have a lot of control for how you uh, render the PDF file. As far as the DXF and DWG uh, format goes, you can set your scale. Um, you have options for um, objects, uh, we can intelligently determine uh, when a bunch of uh, Bezier curves is a circle. We can tell when uh, some paths form a rectangle. So we're able to create objects out of um, single uh, of a group of shapes. And you also have uh, options for uh, making dashed or dotted lines as segments, for example. So if you have a rectangle which is made uh, out of a dashed line, uh, we will see that as a rectangle. Uh, in terms of advanced features, uh, we'll create compound objects. Um, you can fit the drawing to the page, recognize circles and ellipses, uh, set uh, custom line si styles, um, and use true color. Uh, it supports password protective PDFs. Um, you can determine uh, your own file naming for a, a multi-page document. And uh, let's see, so you also have the ability to show uh, an image warning if the scanned image is there so that you, uh, if you haven't tested the software, if you haven't tested the PDF file to see if it's a scanned image, then the software would, can give you an error about that. Okay, so uh, let's convert this file. And what it's going to do is convert um, the three hybrid vector into the DWG format. It's going to put it in the same destination. You can set this and it's going to convert it. Now, it says warnings or errors have, have occurred. This doesn't mean that the file didn't convert. It just means that there is um, an issue with, um, with the file itself. Um, with, uh, sorry, with um, the fonts in the file. Let's do uh, another conversion of uh, this one. We'll go through. And this is an example when the file is successfully converted. So let's exit out of that and let's go into the uh, Autodesk viewer. Um, I've uploaded a couple of files that I converted just so that we wouldn't uh, go through the process of waiting for them to upload. Um, we have, uh, this is the, so this is the one that I just converted. And when you open it in the um, Autodesk viewer, you'll see that it highlights all of the different objects and lines. So all of these are now editable. The text, letter by letter, this it converted as a word. This probably because there's special characters in it uh, was converted um, letter by letter, but this is an entire word. 
that's a word. So all of these things are now editable in AutoCAD or whatever CAD program you're using. And let's go and look at uh, this one. Okay, so when we zoom in on it, you can see that this is now editable in AutoCAD. You can see the text in the lines. OK, so uh, I'm going to go back to the slides. OK, so um, once you know the difference, once you've seen all of the different types of files, the question becomes uh, how you, um, once you know the difference, how do you convert them? So when you have a vector PDF file, you want to use vector to vector conversion software like PDF to CAD. There are a couple other products out there um, uh, like back to CAD and um, auto uh, DWG. Um, but ours is the ours was the first, and ours is um, very mature, and we'd like to think it's the best. Uh, it's a pure approach. It extracts the ge extracts the geometric data and raw text for accurate results, and it understands all of the CAD features like layers and compound objects. The worst thing you can do is use raster to vector software on a vector file, because what that would try to do is it would try to trace the file. And that's highly inaccurate considering you've got all the, the geometry underlaying the software, uh, underlaying the file. So um, if you went from, uh, if you used raster to vector software, you would be tracing it without any knowledge of how the objects are connected or what they are, and you would get a very imperfect result. Uh, with raster PDFs, you wanna use raster to vector conversion software to auto trace the scanned image. For simple things like the shoe that we saw, you can use the tracing tools that are part of Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw uh, to translate the scanned image into line art. Uh, for CAD drawings, especially um, more complex ones, there's specialized raster to vector tools, uh, which understand a lot about CAD drawings, so they try their best to trace the image. Again, you're lucky if you get a 50, 60, 70% uh, um, a rendering, uh, it will require manual cleanup, but it's a, a trade-off uh, versus redrawing the file from scratch. Uh, a hybrid PDF, it depends. It de depends on the primary file type. When we saw the example of the drawing with um, the table on the bottom and the drawing on top, uh, in that case, the vector uh, you would use a vector conversion tool because the drawing is a vector. Um, in another example where you have something which is um, a, mostly a scanned image with just a few callouts, then you probably would want to try and trace that drawing. Okay, so I've already done the demonstration. And um, to summarize, um, Vector and raster PDF files are conceptually very different and they require different conversion tools. Um, vector to vector conversion is reliable and accurate because it's based on data from the original file. Uh, we have products for that, PDF to CAD uh, for CAD, CAM, and PDF to Picture for Visio and Office. Uh, raster to vector conversion is approximate but may be manually redrawing a scanned file. Uh, you have to choose your products carefully you can Google raster to vector and see what sort of solutions are out there. Um, maybe put your um, specialized industry after that in order to find the products that are made for your industry. 
Um, there aren't that many, and we have not found any that we're willing to recommend. So uh, we wish we could because we get a lot of requests for raster to vector and people sending us scan drawings, but it's not what we do. We're specialized in vector graphics. But if you all have found a good raster to vector program that's uh, reasonably priced, then please do let us know because uh, we would uh, like to talk to them and see if we can recommend their software. Uh, whatever you do, don't use raster to vector software on a vector file. Uh, you'll end up with uh, subpar results, and you can easily, just in a couple of seconds, convert that vector file into an editable CAD drawing. So that winds up the presentation part of the webinar. So um, my name again is Jean Haney. Um, if you have questions, we can take them now. Uh, if you want more information, please have a look at visualintegrity.com. Um, we have free 30-day eval versions available for all products. If you want to see the results for yourself, you can send us a test file, and we'll convert it and send it back to you. And you can also email questions to us. And then, of course, you also can get more information from Noveg, and you can um, learn about uh, their pricing and support programs um, for our products. So we would love to hear from you. And now uh, we'll open it up for questions. Yes, thank you, Jean. That was a very useful guide. I think uh, it's clear what to do and what not to do uh, with different types of files. We have had one question, and that was also um, yeah, it's, uh, a question that comes up uh, when people contact us on the website as well. Uh, and it's um, if there's a Mac version of uh, PDF2 uh, CAD. And I sent a link um, showing them that there is such a product. So um, you can find it on novedge.com and in, in the uh, visual integrity product page. And it's easy to um, discover. So yeah. Glad, glad you asked. Thank you. Right. I think, uh, um, yeah, that was the one question. But okay. Does anybody else have questions? Yeah, we're waiting another couple of minutes. Uh, this is your chance, and uh, otherwise, uh, you can download a trial, test it for yourself, and as Jean um, notified you, you can send a test file and. That's great that you provide this um, testing offer. It's really cool. Yeah, it's much easier sometimes, yeah. you know, because yeah. even though the software is simple, there's, uh, there's, you know, there's always a little bit of a learning curve and time is precious for everybody. So the test file is a great way to say, hey, you know, if this really works, let me see. And if it works, then, you know, you get it and then you can use it immediately in your work, but you don't uh, have to spend the time trying it out yourself. Exactly. And we have another question. Uh, how does the software interpret any shape, fill patterns from a PDF? Um, well, shapes we're able to recognize. Um, patterns are, um, uh, they're not shapes. They um, are usually converted into lines, but we have the possibility to uh, ignore them. Uh, because we can see that they're patterns, and so we can remove them. Uh, so that's the most we can do as far as patterns go, is to kind of get them out of your way. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, we'll wait another minute or so uh, for questions. In the meantime, if you don't mind, Jean, I will uh, take the screen back and show okay. and show my screen. Let me get it ready first here we go here we go okay transition completed and uh, while we wait for somebody else to um, type in their questions I want to thank you for joining for spending your time with us today I think this was a very helpful hands-on webinar thank you Jean and thank uh, you for having us. Yes, and this is the the, the page on novad.com where you can find PDF2 CAD. This is the uh, the page for 
the product for Windows, there's a similar um, page for PDF to cut for Mac. For Mac. And um, it's very easy, very intuitive to purchase. There's um, uh, a trial available. If you see here on the tabs, you can uh, download your trial. And there's all the specs. And um, feel free to check it out. Give us a call. We're always happy, more than happy to talk to you. And uh, I don't see any other questions, so I'll, I'll keep um, ending my presentation. And then, um, you know, if questions come in, we'll, we'll, we'll take them. And uh, I just want to announce that our next webinar will be about the new Creo 5.0, which just came out. So this, is a, this will be a first look. And to rewatch today's webinar, or previous ones, you can check out uh, our YouTube or Vimeo channels. Just type in Novetch TV. You will enter our uh, repository of webinar series on uh, YouTube. And I don't see any more questions, so I am going to say goodbye to Jean and to all of you. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, visit Novetch. Give us a call. We're always here for you. Thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye.